Hey everybody, this is uh, Jason Mancuso and Anthony Butera with the Anthony Butera team at Keller Williams Realty. Welcome to the Real Estate Show. Bam. How are we doing? Wanted to talk about pricing strategies. I'm probably going to go off on a tangent. You may not even have to talk today, but I'll make it fast. Um, so I just, I, it's top of mind because I just sent out an extensive email for a big listing opportunity I have coming up and um, seller super analytical um, extremely educated way more educated than me but not in real estate so my advice was and it's tough for a lot of sellers to digest and if they say that we know what you're talking about I find most times they're saying that in the moment and yet they don't really understand it because they don't want to subscribe to the game plan um, the danger zone of listing at the top of the market is that much more amplified right now in the current market that we're in. And I say that because two years ago, I didn't know what an escalation clause was. You didn't know an escalation. None of us knew what an escalation clause yeah. is, right? We've never seen a market like we've been in for the last 18 to 24 months. Well, and even, yeah, more like what, four years, right, probably for the escalation? Yeah, maybe they started surfing oh, yeah. around. Point, point being. But, like, point being, it's an extreme rarity to have a listing that doesn't receive multiple offers with escalation clauses. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying it's more dangerous than ever to list it towards the top of the market is because by listing at the top of the market, you're excluding every buyer towards the bottom of the market that will find a way to stretch their budget to buy your home. But if you priced it closer to the bottom of, not the bottom of the market, but where at a price that's going to show value out of the gate and it's going to draw more attention because offers now are showing up with escalation clauses. If you price it towards the top of the market, let's say you get two offers and the home is listed for two hundred thousand dollars. Well, by listening for two hundred thousand dollars, when you should have listed for one fifty, you may get two offers. One offer may be two hundred thousand dollars. The one may be. 175,000 and we're willing to beat any competing offer by 5,000. So you got $205,000. Okay. Perfect example. I've got a listing that we just put live yesterday um, in Hilton. Ranch were drawing a ton of attention, ton of traffic. And uh, we listed it for one ninety nine nine. The seller subscribed to our method and it's selling. It's going to <laughs> delay negotiations till next Tuesday. At this point, based on the traffic, over 40 showings in 24 hours, I'd be shocked if we don't get 265. And by listening to that, you're going, whoa. Yeah. If I listed for 250, we'd probably have five showings, and we're going to scare some buyers who are going to think it's going to stretch beyond three because it's listed there, and it's not the truth. Now, back to the escalation clauses, because there was two offers – it's only going to get stretched 5000 over the second best offer. But if we can get you 15 offers mm -hmm. now in the sa for, for bidding purposes, for winning purposes, people are going to stretch way beyond their comfort zone. And the more offers means the further that escalation is going to stretch. Without two offers, an escalation means nothing. You're back to the baseline of their offer prior to the escalation. As a seller, you have to play to the demand, right? Yep. And play to what is a, a, it's almost like a fear factor, right? At this mm -hmm. point, given what the market's escalated to. Yeah. And, you know, buyers are savvy and as they should be because we live in a day and age where like, you know, not just the realtor that you're working with, but, you know, all the technology out there and all the resources, they have the information at, the, at their fingertips. So yeah. like they know what pricing looks like, what things should be you know, how it should go. Mm -hmm. And they also are aware, you know, through experience of, of dealing with the market that, okay, a house is listed at this, I'm going to have to go that much far above and beyond what it's listed at. Yeah. So if you're priced at the peak, you're saying that, you know, you're going to scare people away because they're assuming they got to go over and then they just do nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what happens, you, you the, the delayed negotiations period ends, you don't get an offer. Now you look foolish. You got egg on your face. And that buyer that was in originally, all of a the sudden, they don't want it because it's human nature not to want what nobody else right. did. They're like, what yeah. the hell? I'm not yeah. going to be the only ass for this seat. Yeah. Yeah. What am I missing? Right. Exactly. No, nah, I mean, I, it, that's that's it's the it's the the psychology of real estate. 
Mm-hmm. And we, you know, that, it, we, we kind of talk about it all the time. But I don't think I've ever put it that way in terms of like there's a psychological game that you have to play with uh, selling or buying a home. Yeah. And if, and if you're not in tune to that, then you're going to ultimately, you know, either shoot yourself in the foot or leave money on the table. Yeah. Big time. And, and, that, and that's a huge risk out there. It's funny because we just put this listing up 24 hours ago. And like I'm already getting messages from agents saying, Hey, um, listen, my buyers, like they're going to write an offer. They're only willing to go $30,000 over list price. Um, like should they I even bother. Well, yeah, I'm always going to say, yeah, you should bother. One's mad because they have to write an offer. Right. right? Yeah. But I am not mad. And it's like, you know, I feel bad for you. And yet that offer, guess what it did? It just guaranteed at least 30,000 over. And now it's going to move somebody else's escalation. Yeah, you'll kick in higher than that. Exactly. I mean, another example this week that we had, we had a, a listing in East Irondequoit, um, you know, starter home type of type of property, you know, priced at 130000 Yep. Reasonable price point. Um, it, frankly, priced correctly based on the data, mm-hmm. I had offers up, you know, way above that. Yeah. Right? If I would have priced it, way above that we wouldn't be looking at those offers and maybe we get lucky to where there's one of them yeah but that's a big risk that's a big what if versus the 12 offers that i had that all went you know 20 30 40 thousand dollars above that number there's a magic type of you know formula that that you gotta kind of try to try to hit on if we list it where it was worth if we list it for what it was worth two years ago you'll get what it'll be worth in two years with additional inflation, right? And, like, and it's tough, and I find myself, like, not tripping on my words, but it's it's very difficult to drive the message home, and I get it, right? Like, for a lot of people, they're, the majority of their savings is the equity in their home, sure. so you kind of have to tread lightly. It's a delicate well, situation. And yeah, and it, because people are seeing what's out there or what's happening out there, hearing about it or seeing mm-hmm. the data, I'm like, well, what do you mean I got to price it this when this house, when my neighbor's house sold for this? Yeah. I'm like, well, where was your neighbor's house priced? Mm-hmm. Right? Because, you know, a lot of times you look at the data and you see the end result. You don't take the time to look at what the, you know, what the strategy was in the beginning. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's it. Like, what was the proper strategy for getting to that, that number? Yeah. What that, was the formula for that equation? Yeah. Right. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's huge because, again, just, summarizing everything we talked about you, you price it for what things are selling for in this market you're going to scare people away because they feel like they're, they're, they don't feel like they know they have to go over in over asking in in nine out of ten scenarios that are out there and our old theory prior to the market that we're in right now it still holds true in that like this home that we listed for 199.9 right we're capturing buyers that have searches set sure. up to 200,000 now, right? So we're not fishing with one hook and one worm. We're casting a net, yeah. right? So now by casting that net, let's give that buyer a reason to go substantially over what they thought their cap was in today's low interest environment. And now, yeah, they may not get it. They probably won't get it, but they're going to stretch somebody that can go way higher, right? Uh, another example, and not to debunk this theory, but we were working on with a buyer uh, over the weekend for a um, um, a home that was, you know, typically the it's a townhome community, and typically they sell for around 150, you know, maybe a really nice unit, 170, type of thing. Yeah. This thing literally, like, it was a nice place, but for no reason priced at 218. <laughs> yeah. Our buyers went in at 190. And we were talking through it, and, and I could even, like, the conversation I had with them was, look, at 190 still doesn't make sense. Like, you're interested in this house. Okay, great. 218, like, go find another agent if that's yeah. what you want to buy, because I just don't even want to be associated with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But even at 190, it's like, look, at, uh, okay, I can understand the logic, because let's say if this price or if this home was priced correctly, mm-hmm. that, you know, and say it was at, 150 or 170 whatever yeah you probably end up at 190 Mm -hmm. and maybe even an extreme scenario like you don't get it but somebody bids up to 218 yeah um 
they ended up, you know, and, and in a desirable area, nice unit, et cetera, et cetera. Should have all this activity, all these offers, and, and if they did it, you know, the way that we would have done it. Yeah. Two offers. They ended up with 218 or close to it, supposedly. Yeah. They have a feeling that the offer, we were, our buyer was offering cash, and feeling they didn't get a cash offer from the other buyer. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be surprised in 30 days You're when they call, call me, call. and they probably, you know, no shot yeah. in hell of this house appraising. And, and, now, maybe, you know, maybe this buyer really wanted it, right? Yeah. They got it, and good for them. And, yeah. and as long as everything was explained the way that I just did, you know, with our buyer, then then good for them and they're at peace with it. But sure. it's just like, it's it again, goes into that. If it were priced correctly, they would have probably had 20 offers. Who knows what amount they would have gotten to. Just happened to me yesterday. I talked to you about it. The list we put up, we had delayed negotiations until, uh, well, actually Tuesday afternoon and ended up with probably 13 to 15 offers. And buyer got cold feet. It's going to happen in this market. Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen probably even more if they were the only buyer, maybe one of two, um, because they don't feel like they beat that many people out. It's not the spirit of I won, right? I beat 12 other people out. But the reality is when that buyer gets cold feet and they were the only buyer, you have nobody to go to. When there's two offers and the first one gets cold feet, you only have one to go to. Right. The one that I found out got cold feet yesterday that we went under contract with the day before, it was really simple. I took my spreadsheet and I went back to all the offers and I called the second highest. Asked mm-hmm. if they were willing to go up marginally. It was a little bit more. Uh, actually, I think it may have been the same exact amount. Um, and yeah, no problem. Good. Cancellation sent and new contract, right? So we've got backup plans. And in that case, we have 14 backup plans. And that's an excellent point to, to elaborate on because like with the proper strategy, then you've got enough backup options where you're good. And yeah. that's a conversation that we have all the time with these sellers where there's, you know, tens of offers of, you know, like, uh, okay, you know, we got to go back to them. There's, there's always a chance of a deal dying, you know, the first three days of an accepted offer is an attorney approval period, which I refer to as the cold feet card that mm-hmm. somebody can play, and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. The attorney, attorney disapproves the contract. that You can't fight it. Yeah. It's not worth it. You take the wrong strategy, you got nobody to go back to. And now you're sitting on the market waiting for either adjustments or a miracle. Yeah, and, and if there's only one person to go back to, something tells me, they may not be in to the amount that they were in prior. Yeah. We're by ourselves. You're the only buyer you got, right? So the threat of, hey, we'll go back on the market, I'm saying go ahead, test your luck. Yep. I like my chances still. Now, this conversation is especially relevant given the market that we're in currently on July 15th, uh, the day this is taped. Um, you know, slightly different conversation, frankly, three, four months ago where it was like, we could take more risk because the market's that crazy yeah. and in comparison for for uh, uh example's sake is like you know these these offers that we mentioned that we were talking about 10 15 offers mm-hmm. three months ago we were dealing with 30 to 40 offers right yeah so we talked about i think it was last episode where just you know things aren't shifting but the demand is 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 you know either balanced a little more because of increased supply or people are just sick of what's going out there in the buyer pool or they're just you know out partying whatever it is um so now you really got to be craftful in your approach as you know strategy for selling your home and to be honest with you like what we're seeing right now with, with, with agents in, in our business, even here like locally, local realtors, the big agents have just gotten bigger, and it's because they're, they're in production constantly, and they have the best pulse for the market. It's really tough. Uh, and I give that, I tell agents that are new to the business, I give them so much credit for hanging in there and plowing through this because when, when we got in, you couldn't give a house away, right? right? But it was better because the majority of our opportunities were with buyers, right? Because that's where, that's the level of trust they had in you at that point. And you had a hundred houses to choose from and you could take as long as you wanted to think about it, right? And in this market, it's, it's the opposite, right? You yeah. could sleep on it or sleep in it. Yeah. Um, and the, the um, my, and my point is, by having the pulse, by negotiating deals every day, mm-hmm. this market's changed more in the last yeah. six months than than five years prior to this seller's market that, that we've entered into. So it doesn't surprise me. And it's just, it's tough. I, I, like I say it all the time, could you imagine if you, if you let your license go 
three years ago, or you moved to another state and you came back here, our market is unrecognizable, not just from a value perspective, right. but from a perspective of, I mean, look at our contract differences. How we're practicing real estate is completely different That's than it was just three years ago. So true. So many different layers to things that are that are essentially brand new within the last three years. It's like, yeah, if you woke up from a coma, you'd have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. I, I mean, there's no better way to describe it, right? Like if you're, if you're that, you know, um, non-veteran or non-experienced or just not doing a lot of business, you're not entrenched as, as you know, you know, some of the more established agents are. And, and, and that, that, you know, you, you really, you got to listen to this podcast. Right? Yeah, listen to podcast. Well, yeah, no, but you're right. It's just, it's completely different. Like, I remember how I was able to learn the business fairly quickly. Sure. And I felt like we were playing war and now it's like pie gal. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just it's 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 a lot uh, it's a lot more difficult. But again, and I'll say that, like, that's not to discourage anybody, because I also right. feel that right now with where the business is and where technology is and how fast you could catapult your business, mm -hmm. um, the opportunity is better now than ever. It's just it's a little more challenging. For sure. There's a lot to navigate. Yep. Good stuff. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Contact us anytime. Anthony Thank you.